We're in 1 Thessalonians today, uh, continuing through that, that series. I want to encourage you, as we're separated by space, that uh, uh, continue to walk with the Lord. And that, that's the message of 1 Thessalonians. Uh, people that were going through tough times, and yet their, their trust was in the Lord. Uh, I've been trying to encourage our church to pray together. You know, the Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of them. Uh, so it doesn't take a lot. Uh, get somebody else and, uh, and pray with them during the week. We, we need to be praying. And also we need to be uh, speaking to people about the Lord. Uh, there's people who are interested in knowing what's going on and encourage you to, to be doing that. You know, the, uh, the, the church of Thessalonica were people who, the Bible says in uh, chapter 1, verse 6, that they received the word in much affliction. Uh, they were going through, through tough times. But the Bible says they also received it in much assurance. And uh, we have God's assurance uh, that he's with us, that he's, he's doing a work in us. And in difficult times, their church had a good testimony. And Paul in, encouraged them in uh, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse uh, 11. It says, You know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and his glory. And that's the encouragement we have today. Walk worthy of the Lord. Not only encouraged them, he sent them help. In chapter 3, uh, he sent Timotheus uh, to establish and comfort you concerning your faith. He says that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. I found that interesting this week, looking uh, at that, that subject. We're appointed thereunto. There's things in life we're going to go through. We're going through one right now. And uh, th that's just what, what the Lord has for us. And uh, there's a, a verse in Ecclesiastes where he says something like, uh, you know, don't worry about what the Lord has made crooked. You're not going to make it straight. Uh, just, just go with what, what the Lord is doing in your life. And he especially encouraged this, this church uh, to live for the Lord. In chapter 3 and verse 12, the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you, uh, to, to be growing. And in chapter 4, he said, uh, As ye have received of us how you ought to walk and please God, so you would abound more and more. Uh, God wants us to be growing. And uh, during these times of, of difficulty, uh, we need to be growing. Then he, 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 he told them to not only live for the Lord, but to look for the Lord. Uh, Jesus said he's going to catch us up. Uh, the rapture is coming. Uh, we're saved from the wrath to come. And the day of the Lord is coming. Uh, tribulation is coming on, on the earth. Life is hard, but our hope is in the Lord. Uh, life is hard. Jesus is coming again. And that's the, the place we start this morning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that... Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And that's the message this morning is uh, there in, in verse 11. Uh, he says, wherefore, you know, because Jesus is coming again, uh, because life is hard, because life is difficult, he says, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. This morning we're looking at uh, your church life. At your church home. Uh, because Jesus is coming again, we need to be encouraging each other in the faith. Uh, that's a, an important part of our Christian life. We need to be, it uses the word there, edify, building each other up in the faith. And, and in these few verses that we have left in, in 1 Thessalonians, uh, he gives three main things that, uh, that will help us to do that. Leadership, partnership, and worship. We're going to look at two of those this morning. It's interesting, in verses 12 through 22, uh, there's at least 17 instructions for us. Well, <laughs> very quickly, uh, he gives them to us. And they lead to this promise in verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we have God's promise that even in tough times, uh, we have hope, and we have the Lord, and uh, we have a, 
a responsibility as Christians in our, our church. How can we comfort and edify one another, as he talks about there in, in verse 11? Well, the first thing he brings up in verses 12 and 13 is leadership. Let me read. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. He gives at least three instructions there. In verse 12, know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Now, that word know means to recognize. We need to recognize that there's leadership. We need to recognize our particular leader that he's, he's called of God. You know, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 that leadership is God's gift to a church. Have you ever seen an organization without leadership? It, it falls apart. And God knows that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, uh, he says, And he gave, uh, that's the Lord, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith. God gives Leadership. God has, has given leadership. Now, we don't have apostles and prophets in, in, in the early sense, uh, but we do have pastor teachers. We do have evangelists, uh, missionaries that, that go out. Uh, leadership is God's gift, and leadership is God's method of organization. Uh, the Bible uses three words uh, for this office. It's interesting. Each one is represented here in, in Thessalonians. Pastor, uh, there in, uh, what is it, verse 12, Know them which labor among you. And later on he says, and admonish you. Now, a pastor is a shepherd. Yeah, the Bible also uses the term bishop. Uh, that's an overseer or a leader. And he, he talks about those that are over you. That's, that's a bishop. And then the Bible uses the word elder. That's an experienced, mature Christian who's been established as a leader. He says, esteem them highly. Now, these are three different terms, three different titles. They all have to do with the same office and the same person. And these leaders, as the Bible talks about here, number one, they labor among you. Uh, there's an old expression, familiarity breeds contempt. Don't let that happen in your church. Uh, your pastor is one of you. And, and that's important. You know, there are churches where their leaders have nothing to do with the people. That's kind of the world's system of doing things. But real pastors uh, are part of the, of, of the flock. Uh, they have, have to do with people. And that's a difficult position because they labor among you and are over you in the Lord. Now, like I said, the world often doesn't use that method. You know, the leaders are separate. You hardly see them unless they're coming out to complain or something. You know, management and workers. Uh, I remember one person talking about ivory tower leadership in churches. <laughs> uh, kind of the Rapunzel uh, way of doing things. Every once in a while they come out and let their hair down. Uh, listen, that's not a pastor. A pastor is a shepherd. A pastor is to be among you, but they're also to be over you. And he uses the expression, admonish you, and admonish you. Uh, the same word is used in verse 14 when he says warn. It's the exact same word in the Greek. Uh, a pastor is is to warn you. Uh, a pastor teaches and preaches and warns. And God says, as Christians uh, in our church, uh, we're to submit to that. Hebrews chapter 13 and uh, verses 7 and 17. Hebrews 13 verse 7 speaks particularly about church leadership when he says, Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith Follow, considering the end of their conversation. In verse 17, Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Now, God has a, a method of doing things. And uh, I've had occasion uh, to admonish people as a pastor. Now, I don't know any pastor where that's their favorite part of their ministry. But it is a part of the ministry. And I've found 
not every time, but quite often, the modern response to your pastor admonishing you is to find another pastor, find another church. I've had people leave where, where, where I see a problem and I come to them and I admonish them in love and kindness and, and doing my job as a pastor, and boy, you never see them again. Listen, folks, that's not right. God has called us to have leadership in our church, and a pastor is among you, but he's also over you, and part of his job is to admonish you. God says, know them. Know them. Secondly, in verse 13, he says, esteem them, and to esteem them. And then he says, very highly. <laughs> these are not my words. These are God's words. Esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Uh, two main things here. Respect them and love them. Uh, your attitude and your, your actions. Uh, show respect to your pastor. Call him pastor. Uh, don't treat him uh, commonly. And the Bible says this is for their work's sake. Uh, this is not based on their personality. It's based on their, their position. Uh, love, you know, when you love your pastor, that's an, that involves action. You know, I was thinking uh, this week, uh, some of the best ways you can love your pastor is just to be faithful and to respond to the word and win people to Christ. Uh, do the work of the ministry. You know, do your part. Uh, that'll be a blessing to him. Uh, God says, know them, esteem them. And then the third thing, and be at peace among yourselves. <laughs> uh, when a church has problems, uh, it's such a sad thing. I've been in churches where, where there's been things going on, and uh, it just really spoils what God intends to be going on. Uh, leadership will help this. You know, when leadership sees problems, they can help people to, to resolve them. But, you know, being at peace among yourselves will help leadership as well. Uh, in verse 14, as we, we go on down, he talks about not being unruly. Uh, we don't need unruly people uh, in the church. In uh, Philippians chapter 2 and uh, verses 2 through 4, he's basically talking here about not being selfish. Be at peace among ourselves. Uh, we can't have a me first attitude. Philippians 2 verse 2, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yeah, I've often said, if we're going to have a fight, well, we should fight about who gets to serve, <laughs> who gets to uh, do the job for the Lord. Don't be selfish. Uh, to encourage each other and to build each other up in the faith one of the things God says we need is leadership. It's a blessing for a church to have a pastor. But you know, we also need partnership. Let, let me make this statement. God expects you to be a faithful part of a church. Let, let me say that again. God expects you to be a faithful part of a church. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Uh, the, the end of verse 13 says, Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Partnership. There are responsibilities you have uh, as a member of a church. And you should be a member of a church. You should have a commitment uh, to a body of Christ uh, that's functioning for the Lord and is scriptural. Uh, there are actions, responsibilities that God gives us as church members. Uh, one of those is he says, now uh, this is not much fun, but he says, warn them that unruly, unruly people are careless. Now you see that all the time. People are careless with the precious things of God. Uh, they're, they're careless uh, with their Christian life. They're careless with their words. They're careless with their church. They're careless with their character. And as Christians, we need to be careful that we're not careless. <laughs> the word warn means to admonish. Unruly means out of order. If you want to picture it, picture a group of people marching and one person out of step. <laughs> That's the unruly one. That's the one who is not subject to rule. I find it interesting that in 2 Thessalonians 3, 
God particularly relates this to laziness. 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 7, he says, Yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. He relates it to not working. Later on in verse 11, For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Listen, nobody owes you a living. And as Christians, we need to be hard workers. We need to be people who are, are willing to, uh, uh, to, to, to do what needs to be done. And uh, God, God tells us that's part of being unruly is laziness. These people are wayward. Their solution is to get in step. And the step we need to get into is the Lord Jesus. Uh, what God has said. Uh, we need to get involved. He says, warn the unruly. Secondly, he says, comfort the feeble-minded. Now, you might think, hey, I know a few feeble-minded people. Uh, feeble-minded people, that, that doesn't have to do with their intelligence. All right? Now, that has to do with uh, their reactions to life. The, the Greek word is actually made up of two words that mean small-souled. These are people that are fearful. These are people that quite often are quitters. They, they don't want to try. Uh, sometimes this might be a person who's negative, uh, fearful. These people are worried. Their solution is to trust the Lord. And we can help each other in that. Uh, comfort the feeble-minded. Encourage them. You know, we can relate to them times when we were fearful and how the Lord helped us. We can get alongside them. Uh, the word comfort just means to encourage and, and console. Their solution is to trust the Lord. Then he said, support the weak. That's pretty simple. Uh, support means to hold them up. Weak means they don't have much strength themselves. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 uh, says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now, that word meekness means strength under control. If you have your strength under control, you can use it to help others. Support the weak. Use it in a good way. Now, these characteristics that he's talking about are all around us, and oftentimes they're in us. And, and let me warn you, people with these qualities are wearisome. Uh, be careful of your attitudes when you're dealing with them. Uh, you know, it's easy to think, well, why can't they just do what's right? Why can't they, why do they have to keep quitting? Why don't they get over it? Why don't they be strong? Why don't they be faithful? Yeah, and watch your attitude, because that's the next thing he talks about there. Be patient toward all men. Be careful. There's going to be times when you're the one that's going to need the help. But there's always going to be uh, those that are unruly or feeble-minded or, or weak. And we need to be careful of our heart towards them. Uh, up on them. Uh, don't lose your temper. And watch your motives. Verse 15, he says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. You know, the world has a basic payback system. In um, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. The, um, the world just operates that way. They love those that love them. They hate those that hate them. But I say unto you, he says in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. you know, Jesus' standard is different. It's not a payback the same as what they've done. It's payback in the love of God. In uh, Romans chapter 12, he gives us some good teaching on this subject, Romans chapter 12, verse 17. You know, there, there are heathen societies where they actually give bad for good, where they honor deceit. Uh, I remember hearing of a missionary working with some natives, and when he got to Judas, 
Oh, they, they thought that was great. He, they thought he must be the hero of the Bible because they honored that kind of life, a deceitful life. Listen, that's not the way we want to live. And we don't want to just be like the world and pay good for good and bad for bad. We want to be like the Lord. And we want to give good for evil. In uh, Romans 12, verse 17, he says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That expression, coals of fire, means you're, you're doing him a favor. You're helping him out. Uh, we don't need to operate by, uh, by payback. We need to be careful in our church that we're not uh, demanding that people deserve our love. Uh, listen, God doesn't love us because we're lovable, and we need to have that same attitude towards people. Uh, watch your motives. Be godly. He says, ever follow that which is good. And part of that is having a servant's heart. In uh, 2 Corinthians 4, Paul wrote of himself, We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Uh, we need to have a servant's heart. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, many of you probably know these verses, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. We need to be doing our part in being a blessing to others. There'll, there'll come a day when you'll need someone to do that for you. And to do that, we need the fruit of the Spirit. Our, our actions come from our heart. And when we, uh, when we respond in, in hateful and ungodly ways, it's because that's what's in our heart. Here in this, this passage, he's already mentioned several of the fruit of the Spirit. In verse 13, he, he talks about love, talked about peace. Verse 14, he talked about long-suffering or patience. In verse 16, he says, rejoice evermore. Uh, the joy of the Lord. We need to have the joy of the Lord. Uh, that's part of the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, he doesn't just say rejoice when things are good. Rejoice once in a while. He says rejoice evermore. And I think that's, that's important. We need to practice the love of the Lord. And this isn't just something for others. Yeah, I've, I've heard people say, well, that church down there, uh, they don't love me. I was talking to a lady, oh, many years ago now, who was a, a member of the church I was the pastor of. And she was talking about that church down there. Boy, she, was, <laughs> she, she didn't like those people down there. And I told her, I said, do you realize that you're one of those people down there? Folks, this is not just something for someone else. This is for us. We need to do our part. Let me ask you, are you doing your part in your church? Most importantly, not just are you part of a church, are you part of Christ? Do you know the Lord? At verse 12, he, he says, we beseech you, brethren. Are you one of the brethren? In John 1, 12, Jesus, the, the Bible says, uh, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. The way you become one of the brethren is through Christ. You trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let me ask you, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Uh, the Bible talks here in verse 16 about rejoicing evermore. Will you rejoice evermore in heaven, in eternity? Well, if you're a Christian, you will. And God is telling you to rejoice evermore now, here on earth. Not just once in a while, but rejoice evermore. God can, can use us to be a blessing to each other if we'll submit ourselves to God and to his will. You know, for us to uh, comfort each other, to encourage each other, to build each other up, uh, we need leadership, but we also need partnership. And next week, we're going to talk about how we, we need worship. But you know, the key thing is you need to know the Lord. If you'd like to talk to somebody about that, uh, call me, uh, text me. 
uh, email me, uh, let, let me talk to you about it. Uh, go on our website, fbcbrisbane.org, fbcbrisbane.org. Uh, there's a, a gospel track there uh, that digitally you can, you can go through and uh, hear the plan of, uh, read the plan of salvation. Uh, you need to know the Lord. And if you know the Lord, you need to be committed to obeying his word. Wherefore, and he's talking there about the troubled times uh, that they were living in, the troubled times that are coming. Comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Uh, you know, this separation that we're, we're experiencing, it's really contrary uh, to a church. A church, the, the word means assembly. Uh, God wants us to assemble, and, and we will physically. Right now we're doing it electronically, some strange ways. Uh, but don't let that push you away from the things of God. Get, uh, get serious about the things of God. Number one, know the Lord. But as well, uh, follow His Word and be committed to, to praying with and for other believers and reaching out to the lost. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank You so much for Your Word. Lord, thank You for our church. Thank You that we can uh, serve together and serve You as, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling, some with uh, difficulties with their jobs, some with difficulties physically and in their health. Uh, Lord, we, we need your help. And Father, we need to help each other. Help us to draw together as a church as best we can. Lord, help us to love you and to honor you. And Father, we pray if there are those that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would uh, convict them, that they might uh, repent and believe and trust you as Lord and Savior today. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you for coming today.